Now, if you don't tell me where the money is, I'm gonna sell this on eBay. Oh no! If he does that, you'll have to resort to emulation! Who the hell is this? Who? Me? I'm Riker, the biker. How's it going? Yeah, I'm just robbing this guy, you know how it is. Hey, do your worst! Everyone knows you backstreet bandits don't sell anything on eBay. You always sell stuff on... I don't know, fucking Pinterest? Oh, that's where you're wrong, because I'm gonna sell this online for a price way above its normal value. You bitch! What do you want from me? I'm an entrepreneur! Well, I mean, when you put it like that... I mean, I guess I see where you're coming from- QUICK RIKER HIT THE EMERGENCY TELEPORTATION SWITCH! What? What the hell? What did you do? We're gonna have you teleported to another dimension. Why? You are a scalping son of a bitch! Couldn't have said it better myself. You son of a- Ugh, my head. Where am I? Holy shit, it worked! Why did you send me here? Because you need to repent for your sins. Here. You want me to play Sonic the Hedgehog? No, I want you to experience Sonic the Hedgehog. Isn't that literally the same thing? Oh, <laughs> you'll soon find out. Oh man, three of my favorite letters in gaming, S, T, and H. Is that short for please send me to hell? Sonic T. Hedgehog, one of the most iconic names in video game history. Me and this little blue rodent have a long historic background together. I'm what one would call a Sonic pioneer. I played most of his games growing up, more than I did any of my other games to be honest, because it was just something about him and the way his games felt that always made me say to myself, alright, that's enough Nintendo and fighting games for an hour, I'm going back to this blue bastard. And going back I did, I played Sonic 2 religiously as a kid, thanks to this baby right here, the Sega Genesis Plug and Play. Look at it, it's disgusting. This is one of those plug and play consoles that had more than one game on it. This is actually the first video game I ever played slash owned myself, funny enough. It had Alex Kidd, Game Ground, Echo the Dolphin, The Ooze, Columns, it had a selection of games on it albeit a weird selection in my opinion. Sonic 2 was the one that I played the most, and it wasn't until a couple of years later on Christmas where I'd finally be able to play the first Sonic game, thanks to Sonic Mega Collection Plus, and oh boy, I am not a fan of this game. But before any of that, I think it's as good a time as any to start with the history of this game. Whatever ends my suffering quicker. So Sonic the Hedgehog, he's Sega's love child. Back in the early 90s, Sega was trying to come up with the mascot to compete with Nintendo's Mario, because this kid right here wasn't paying the bills. A contest was held among the employees where Sega would decide the design for the new mascot, and there were a couple that definitely stood out, like a rabbit or this pajama wearing man later redesigned as the main antagonist. It was also hinted at that Sonic may have a real human girlfriend named Madonna and be a part of a rock band, but these ideas were scrapped and probably for good reason. I'm sure they wouldn't really make much sense with this kind of mascot, so I... God damn it. Once Sonic's design was chosen thanks to Naoto Oshima for drawing the Hedgehog concept, Sega would immediately begin working on what would be one of the most recognizable names in gaming history. Sega wanted Sonic to succeed, and that desire pushed Sonic in the right direction in the early 90s. His cocky, cool dude-like attitude, colors that match the Sega logo, the fact that his game came bundled in with the Genesis along with the price drop, it, to some extent, it seems like Sonic took over the gaming industry for a time. In later installments, I... You know... All I'm gonna really say is, Sonic seems to have what most therapists would identify as an identity crisis. I mean, look at him. Would you trust anyone that looks like this? I wouldn't trust my father if he looked like that. So as I mentioned earlier, my first experience with Sonic 1 was thanks to Sonic Mega Collection Plus for the PS2, so that's the version we're gonna be visiting today. Unfortunately, not the Christian Whitehead version for mobile devices or even the other many, many re-releases of the game. No, I wanna keep it simple today and focus on the Sonic Mega Collection version. I own the original copy as well as a hand-me-down Sega Genesis that I got later on in life, but Mega Collection seems to be the most convenient for me, so we're gonna be sticking with that one. So Sonic 1, as I mentioned earlier, is a competitor to Nintendo's Mario, which at the time, Nintendo was still lighting the world on fire with the most recent Mario game, Super Mario Bros. 3 for the NES. They both technically have similar gameplay styles, in which I mean the 2D platformer style, but are significantly different. Sonic 1 is all about speed and attitude, oozing with charm and personality, which is what I would like to say about most of those points, but in actuality, Sonic 1 is a mess. It's full of so much weirdness and inconsistencies that just should not be present in Sega's first title to introduce the new revolutionary mascot. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm not a fan of this game and I'll get into why soon enough, but before that, let's get into the story. So the main antagonist, Dr. Robotnik, is kidnapping animals and having them power his robots known as Badnik. So it's up to Sonic to foil his evil plans and free all of the animals being held hostage. That's more complex than my life. 
the story here is very short, sweet, and straight to the point. I'd imagine not many people, if anyone at all, would have a hard time understanding what the plot of Sonic the Hedgehog for the Genesis is about. It's very easy to grasp, really. Evil mad scientist is capturing animals and holding them hostage inside of robots and it's your job to save them. That's really all there is to it. My question is, why do we have to read the manual of the game just to understand what the story is about? They could have gone about that in so many different ways in my opinion, like before you make it to the title screen give a little synopsis of what's going on in the form of dialogue and images, or have a little in-game cutscene with or without dialogue to explain what Dr. Robotnik is doing. It just seems a little tedious in my opinion to have to go to the manual just to get the general rundown of the story when it could have easily been explained to you in the actual game itself. Mario even explains the main objective in his actual game. You beat Bowser and there's a toad saying that Princess Peach has been taken to another castle. That's already laying out the objective of what needs to be done in the game, i.e. saving Princess Peach. Here you have to go the extra mile to crack open the manual and read a little paragraph summing up what's going on in the game, which again just comes off as tedious to me and seems unnecessary. Besides all that, Sonic 1 is like your standard 2D platformer. He can run left and right, jump up and down, crouch, roll into a ball to kill enemies, or jump on them if need be, which is the most practical way of killing enemies. He can also jump on these TV-like boxes to give him some extra goodies, like rings, which is essentially Sonic's health in the game, temporary invincibility, an extra life, and a shield, which is only good for an extra hitbox. Like I said, it's like a standard 2D platformer. The real meat and potatoes is this right here. The main shtick with Sonic is his speed, which he uses to breeze through zones. There are three acts per zone and a boss fight at the end of every third act. They're relatively easy, albeit kind of boring in my opinion. They don't really leave too much to the imagination. It's just Dr. Robotnik in a flying car with this thing attached to it, or this, or this. It's not bad, just lacking in creativity, I feel. I will say, however, that they do get much better in later games and are actually a lot more difficult in my opinion. And now it's time to get into why Nico is not a big fan of this game. Is it because it exists? So this game is divided into 6 zones with 3 acts and a boss fight at the end of each act. Green Hill Zone, Marble Zone, Spring Yard Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Starlight Zone, and Scrap Brain Zone. It's a pretty decent number of overall levels you'll be playing through, but that's the thing. The only decent part about this is the number of levels and not the actual levels themselves. This ties into what I said earlier about this game being a mess, because that's what it feels like, a giant, inconsistent, convoluted mess. The reason I say that is because I feel like most of the levels here don't really fit and kinda contradict what Sonic was promising, you know. Speedy Blue Hedgehog. Now I want to go over all of these levels in depth, that way I can make it more clear as to why I don't like this game. Green Hill Zone is the first level, and I think Sega made the right call having this be the first level as opposed to any of the others. It nails the right amount of speed and platforming needed here, and even encourages exploration as a way to find some of those goodies I mentioned earlier. This is also the first level where you can enter a special stage by collecting 50 rings. Hold on to them until you reach the end of the zone and be whisked away by a giant ring into a seizure inducing drug trip. These special stages are weird, and when I say weird, I mean weird. They're so hard to control here, mainly the one part that Sonic is always in a ball and you're technically not even controlling Sonic, you're controlling the stage around him. By doing so, you're supposed to move Sonic down to where one of the six Chaos Emeralds are located and try to grab it without touching the goal. Now that's easier said than done, but here's where Nico decided to give up with these. They require you to constantly hit these little gem things, but the problem is, the special stages are constantly rotating so you can never have a steady position and feel a balance to be able to break through and nab the Emerald and it doesn't help that whenever you rotate the stage in the direction you want Sonic to go in, it almost immediately starts rotating in the opposite direction, so I just give up. They aren't supposed to be easy, I know, but they're not supposed to be annoying either. I think they could be a lot of fun if they weren't structured like this. They aren't difficult by any means, but they just feel like a chore to go through, and it also doesn't help that grabbing all six emeralds only gets you a slightly different ending that you can easily find on YouTube. I grabbed zero emeralds. <laughs> what a bitch. More on that later, I want to go back to Green Hill before going into the other zones. So in the context of this game, I think Green Hill is a good stage, dare I say, one of if not THE best stage in the game, but that's only for this game. I've seen so much of Green Hill be used as of late to the point to where it's just really annoying to see. Sonic Generations made sense, it was Sonic's 20th anniversary celebrating his history. Sonic Lost World tried to change it up by giving it a different name, but come on, you're not fooling anyone with this, and Sonic Mania and Forces. No! There are plenty of other games that use Green Hill as well, but I think I've gotten my point across enough. I think Green Hill Zone in this game is a really good level. It's a perfect first level for introducing a new mascot all about speed and attitude. The others, eh, don't talk to me about. Marble Zone is next, and this is where a lot of my gripes start with this game. Remember how I said that Green Hill Zone was the perfect level of speed and platforming and was actually a good level? Well, this completely throws all of that praise out the window and says, haha, f*** you, am I right? This level is a complete 180 from Green Hill Zone, and I wish I were exaggerating. Everything you heard up to now about how Sonic is all about speed and attitude, yeah forget about that. When this level says fuck you for having expectations, it means fuck 
fuck you for having your expectations. Seeing as to how we get here right after Green Hill Zone, I assumed it was going to retain the same feeling of that zone. The loops, the speedy platforming, the exploration, and more importantly, the consistency. So, did this level meet my expectations? No. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Yes? W what do you want? Eh, I just wanted to know what the temperature's like there. Why? Obviously to see if you're comfortable. I can't imagine a world where playing Sonic on an actual official console wouldn't be comfortable. What? Eh, don't mind him. He hates the entire concept of emulation, so he tries to be as nice as possible to those who play games on their official hardware. I'm so confused. Are you gonna tell him the temperature or not? Below average, I guess? Ooh, ooh, Riker, did you get that? He said the temperature is below average. Like Marble Zone? I hate everything. I don't like this level, I'd even go as far as to say I hate it. Marble Zone is the start of my problems with this game. For instance, this level completely removes the whole gimmick that Sonic was going for to help him stand out in the platformer genre. This level is very slow paced compared to Green Hill, and it doesn't help that you have three acts to go through here. There's lava, spikes, enemies with spikes, falling spikes, wall spikes, slow repetitive sections that require a lot of waiting, buttons, blocks, pushing blocks, riding on blocks. Burning grass? This level is full of a lot of bullshit, and I deeply apologize to anyone who actually likes Marble Zone. I'm sorry, but I can't look at this level with a sense of fun. It's too slow and tedious, not to mention the overabundance of spikes and lava, with those pieces of shit spiky enemies that only die by rolling into them because they too have the spiky hard on treatment, and I think that's complete and utter bullshit, but what do I know about game design? Act 1 was usually the furthest I ever got in this game as a kid. I always found it odd that we went from a more fast paced level like Green Hill to a complete torture inducing spiky hell with blocks and catchy music. That's the only compliment I can give this level really, it has catchy music and I have nothing more to say about it. Spring Yard Zone is next and this level is a tad bit better than Marble Zone mainly due to the fact that I can actually build up momentum here and keep a steady pace of speed for about 2 seconds before I'm interrupted by absolute fuckery. How is it that level seemed to get more and more annoying the further you get into the game? Like, Green Hill Zone was fun, it was colorful, it spoke volumes about what this blue rabbit animal was, and then you get to Marble Zone, and it's like, fuck you, and then you get to this zone, and it's like, fuck you even harder, I don't get it. Granted, I did say that it was a tad bit better than Marble Zone, and that's only because you can build up a little bit of speed here. Then Sonic 1 does a Sonic 1 and, <laughs> you know. I often see this level referred to as the casino level of Sonic 1, and I never really got that impression when looking at it. It seems more like a city themed level in my opinion, probably just because of the background. It's really a shame that a level with this theme and such catchy music was subjected to... This. And my outlook on this zone is the same as Marble Zones, honestly. It sucks absolute fing shit, but the music is pretty damn catchy, so that's about it. It's also full of spiky balls, these rolling enemies, and this little sign that says cope for some reason. Labyrinth Zone. I just remembered I have a gun in my right pocket. This level's great. I'm about to pull the trigger. It's got ruins and architecture. It's full of water and traps and it's areas for precise platforming. I'm lying. This level sucks and I hate it. I use the level select Chico to skip it. Starlight Zone is next up and... It's actually good? It feels like a Sonic level. You actually go fast here. It has the loops and areas for more precise platforming. It encourages exploration and has mechanics that are actually fun to use. And it only took three levels after the first one to get here. This is what I call a good Sonic 1 level. Staying true to what was promised with Sonic. A fast paced fun level that doesn't make me want to drink Listerine. I really like the theme of this level. It's like a roller coaster of sorts. It's got the rails and loops. It takes place at night. It's the second and last best level in the entire game. I'd say my only gripe with Starlight Zone are the enemies in Bottomless Pits. The enemies here are spiky once again, but there are also enemies you can't kill because they kill themselves by self-destructing when you get within 5 centimeters of them. The bottomless pits speak for themselves. I mean, it's a roller coaster. What else would be at the bottom of those? I found bleach. Scrap Brain Zone is the final level comprised of three acts, and I'd say it's not that bad, but then I'd be lying. Now granted, I do think it's better than the last three zones before Starlight Zone, but it's not better than Starlight Zone. It's technically the last level in the game, and it feels just like one. The traps, man. This level is bombarded with them. Bottomless pits, fire, electricity, getting crushed, spikes, the spiky enemies from Marble Zone are back. Scrap Brain Zone is, for lack of a better word, hard. I'm aware that it's the final level in the game, and most final levels in most games tend to be pretty damn hard, but this level just takes the cake. There are too many traps! This level is hard because it's full of so many traps, which there's nothing wrong with, and it kinda makes sense seeing as to how this is supposed to be Dr. Robotnik's base, but I can never get behind this level being difficult solely because it's full of so many traps and enemies. 
I could understand if it had a challenging layout that would require you to explore in order to reach the end of each act with the level getting longer with each act you clear, but this was on the Sega Genesis in 1991, so I kinda doubt that Sega could pull that off in the early 90s with their brand new mascot on their still at the time brand new piece of hardware. And it seems like nothing's really changed, I mean if you played Sonic Forces you can beat the game in 5 minutes. It also has this level similar to Labyrinth Zone as the final act. And I skipped that one also, the real final level is the final zone where you take on the final boss. It's a pretty straightforward boss battle, it's not necessarily hard, more challenging if anything, and the only reason I say that is because you have to fight Dr. Robotnik here with no rings, so that means if even the slightest thing touches you then... I feel like this is kinda cheap on Sega's end, the only reason this boss fight is even challenging in the first place is because we have no rings, and it's like, sure, it's the first ever Sonic game, they wanted to keep things simple and not too hard, but this feels too easy, which just comes off as... I don't know, cheap. The attack patterns are fairly easy to learn, there's not really a second or third phase to look forward to here. If anything, this feels like a regular boss fight you go up against during the third act of a stage. I think it would have been a lot more interesting if they carried over attacks from previous fights over to this one acting as multiple phases, or even better, an actual good final boss. Thank god later releases have good final bosses that actually pose a threat. The only sense of fear I got while going up against Dr. Robotnik here was that I might have ruined my noodles in the microwave. And that's Sonic 1. You beat the final boss and then you greet it to the ending. As I've said numerous times already, I'm not a fan of this game. I'd even go as far as to say I don't like it, and obviously for good reason. Not because it's Sonic on the Genesis or because it's a Sonic game in general, but because I'm noticing a lot of flaws in this game that I never really noticed as a kid. The all over the place level design, bad enemy placement, labyrinth zone. It also doesn't help that grabbing all the emeralds only grants you a slightly different ending thus making the task of getting all the emeralds feel like a waste of time as opposed to other games which actually gave you an initiative to look forward to completing. Alright, that's it. I can't take it anymore. This game sucks! The level design is inconsistent, the enemy placement sucks sh and the ending where you get all the chaos emeralds? What's the f***ing point?! You get flowers? That's bullshit. I honestly don't see the problem. I think it's a great game. Yeah, but you like everything. I don't like emulation. Fair enough. Since we're done here, can I go home now? No. Why? You still have four more games to go. Nope.